The walls run their family from Hook go back many generations and were among the first in the country to own a set of steam gallopers. Uh, my great-grandfather, Richard Wall, he bought a set of gallopers, Mary Durbin. When he died, these two, that's where Wall brothers come from, was, was John and Richard Wall, was these two sons, which John Wall was my father's father, which was my grandfather. And he carried on the business from his father, as my father carried on the business from him, as I'm carrying on the business from my dad. And my son would do the same thing me. From my dad's side, from Walsh's side, they've been showing me all right back to, as I say, Richard Wall was my great grandfather. He originated from Oxfordshire as a farmer. His family was farming people from Oxfordshire. And then he married one of the Matthews from North Camp Farnborough. And he, and he become into a travelling base. From my mother's side, she was a baker. They still, apart from that, a load of them used to go round with a roundabout in a tent. And they used to go to Reading in the triangle, they call it. And it was time for them to go in, and they had a ride, and a show would be in there, what they call a biography show. Well, then that's where my dad met my mother. Because she came from Reading, but she was not a showman, if you understand what I mean. She was settled down in a house. She lived down Great Knowledge Street. So you were in what we call a flat. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. Settle down. Mm. You hear that? Mm. Then, uh, um, as the years went by, they gradually settled down. They all come back to the haulage business. As the war came on, you couldn't travel. Everything went like you know then. Well, then I used to stop here and mind the cafe. Well, I'd rather go fair keeping and mind cafe seven days a week, every day of the year. And that's how, all, you know, then it all came about. And we met up and, and we went into it. When we come in, then we've had air fit, all our married life in fair business. And he didn't want to go we didn't want, we could have had the cafe 15, 16 years ago if we wanted to, but it didn't appeal to me like fair business. Despite the many pleasures involved with owning and working on the pump there, there was a great deal of hard work involved behind the scenes that the general public don't see, as John's wife, Bernice, explains. A lot of hard work. A lot of organisation goes into that kind of thing, much more than most people realise. It um, takes 12 months of a year to run a organise on an average uh, seven months season. Um, we, we normally start and operate from March right through until the beginning of November. And when we're on site, we can be in charge anything from five to eighty pounds uh, comparing a small site to a large site. And you're responsible for everything. What a lot of people forget, this is our business. This is, this is a way of life for us. But foremost and first of all, it's still our business. I know it's a strange business, it's not a business that people understand, but this is our business. And people don't tend to look at it as we pay them rent or we've got any expenses. This is our business and this is the only business that we know. Where the rubbish is going to be uh, collected from when the guy's coming to empty the portable loo, uh, what time and what day the teachers are coming to teach the, uh, the children on the site. We are literally responsible for everything, so it's very tough. Has come up against many problems, none more irritating or influential than poor weather. There's a prime site um, in Eastbourne, and if the weather was shining today, it would be packed with people. Unfortunately, it's pouring with rain, and it's Sunday, which is in peak season, you couldn't have it any better, and unfortunately, the sun is very So, yes, the weather makes a big difference.
The main problem is the site, that's number one. We're finding it very difficult now. Uh, building has taken, taken over a lot of the sites where the property developers come along and they build on the site. We are now mainly uh, dealing with um, uh, the councils in the area, and that, that means that it's parked areas, very delicate sites that need um, a lot of time and effort get on the site and a lot of time and effort to get off of the site relating to the fact that you, you have to leave a big deposit on the on the on the site and if you do any damage to it then unfortunately you lose your deposit. So but another problem we've got is as things are moving faster, the rides are moving faster, the lights are going more brighter, the music got more big to it and the people want more atmosphere. And this is another problem, what we've got with the residents, keeping the noise down to keep them happy, and keeping the noise up to keep the public happy. We're in, we're in the middle all the time. Take me back to the nights we felt alive Picking up the pieces on a summer night I didn't know that I would feel just like my heart's on fire Whenever I'm with you Cause we go back in time The thrills I miss And all the things I wish we did All I know is that I need somebody like you One of the main problems is We're not accepted in the thing I'm not saying we want people to bow down to but people don't give us a lot of time. They tend to think we can move mountains in a matter of seconds. We're bad people. I mean, when you look at it, we, we, we're a small town, small village. We've got all our transport to get on site, regardless of whether it's in a street, in a car park, or in a field, or a park, or whatever. We need time to set it up. We need time to do it all in position. But we, we, we generally find that people seem to think that we can do it all with a click of a wand and just get it in there. They, they don't give us any time. We get a lot of pressure from that. Don't look to see that the annual fair comes around once a year or twice a year. And when the annual fair comes around, 90% of the time they're the first ones to say, you don't want to And it, 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 what they forget, it's our business. We do as much as we can to be as quiet as we can, but we haven't got no control over the public that comes to the fair. The impression that I get from the locals, a lot of the local people, is that they'd rather us not be there. And my family has been through, has been through all, all of our affairs as long as many of the people that live in the villages, longer than most. Wickham in Hampshire was granted a royal charter in 1269. The charter allowed the villagers to hold a fair every 20th of May. Like many fairs, its origins were market-based, of which a horse fair still exists. But in the 18th century, fire eaters, boxers and jugglers started with them. Since the license for the fair was held by the Wolf family, Wickham was among the first places to see the spectacle of the steam balconies, and subsequently many other steam balconies. However, like many other sites, several locals have become disillusioned with the fair, and a public meeting was held to discuss its fate. Ten years to my knowledge, after each pair, rumblings can be heard. Then it would be checked, that shouldn't be allowed, and so on. So the parish council called this meeting to give people the opportunity 
to voice some of their views in public and hopefully to hear constructive suggestions as to how Fair Day will be made more enjoyable and safer for everyone in future. We work hand in hand with the health and safety. The health and safety executives are very, uh, we've got to work hand in hand with them, but we find they're very, not easy going, they're, they're very firm, but then we get no problem from them. Let me stress here, ladies and gentlemen, however, that in calling this meeting, the parish council is not advocating any significant change to the status quo, but neither would it rule out such change if that change were both achievable and widely supported. We the police tend, tend to um, take supremacy and organise the liaison with the people who are actually undertaking the outside, i.e. We're at the Fratton Park with the age of the football club. We're at the carnival or perhaps the Bishop Walking Charles. I mean, we the age of the organizers or whatever else. This fair is unique in any other event that I ever believe in that we can't be aged with anybody. Um, none of the gypsy fraternity admit to having anything to do with the fair, and none of them admit to having any sort of status within the organization. Well, shouldn't they have a horse fair once a year, so that type of people want a horse fair? And that's their pleasure and they like everything, should they? The whole organisation of this event on the 20th of May this year is undertaken by a number of agencies to organise it in the manner that they feel is appropriate and the gypsies come along and do whatever they feel. We endeavour to keep them in line as they're probably aware. The solution I came up with was to actually to, to, to try and rationalise the horse pack, which, which blocks the main road. The, the main road is the obvious one to keep open in mind, in my view. And we can cope with it with the square code, but it can't cope with the, with the main road code so easily. So to, to me, the logical option is to uh, put the horse pad in the square. For half a day? For a day? I, I don't know, that's, that's whatever you want to do. And to move the, uh, the front of the area out of the square. In your Wickham person, we look forward to it every year, like we did Christmas. And it was the once a year day when everybody met, and it was a, a family affair. Um, of course, we all went up for the horses, and uh, it was just one of those things we all looked forward to. The front arrow, as I see it, is, is an integral part of the whole thing, and shouldn't be, shouldn't be moved away. I think it, 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 in terms of revenue for the village, it's the revenue we lose it. Certainly for some fair it's a revenue earner. In terms of what we're paying for a piece, well I've heard various figures standing around, but I, 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 I'd be fairly sure that the cost is in spite of it. I think the main thing is it's a tradition, um, you know, going from generation to generation, and um, it's been coming to Wickham, I think, from about the 13th century it started. Uh, historically, I think that fair has developed over many years 700 or more, and the emphasis has always been on the amusement side of, of the fair. In the old medieval days, that was a big function of the fair. As far as I can find out, the horse trading element didn't really uh, affect the village, and in fact it didn't occur before about 1930. I've got mixed feelings about Wickham Fair. Parts of it I enjoy because I see my children enjoy it, but I'm not personally a big fan of fun fairs of any sort, especially. Um, I'm in favour of keeping them all traditions, which obviously the fair is. Although I think when you're living in a changing world like we are, sometimes what was appropriate in olden days possibly isn't quite appropriate. Today. As I see it, uh, rather than contrary to what has been said, I think that over the years, the amusement side of the fair, the fun fair, has considerably run down both in standard and even in size. I think the standard as well as anyone's, and as they're getting smaller, they're going to get one into the street, what's permitted? And that only reaches from one end to the other. So, you know, I, I can't say how you can say it's getting smaller. We're very passionate about it. 
I've been born and bred in Wickham, and I've lived in Wickham for 60 odd years. And it's part of our heritage, and I wouldn't like to see it go. The safety point of view, as far as the fire goes to the the sharing is there is no problem. The hard is to make sure they are set. There is sufficient room between the units. Mm -hmm. The fire can get there through, and you can get up and into any the dairy So there is no problem with the matter in the fire The car is slowly mm -hmm. in the square, and yes, it can hurt financially, but we can carry it on a lot longer. And the stair or the sun stair in the square, I actually can't provide no problem in having the toe in the square to the end of the time for it. Um, Dana was with the horses running up and down the road, the traffic, I suppose, is either I don't like it. It was a sad day when the galloping horses didn't come anymore because I thought that was the fair. It affects me because of the traffic that comes around our way more, past our houses, so there's a lot more traffic. There's nowhere to park. People pinch our parking spaces to come to park to go to the fair. We can't use the road for that one day, but as I've just said, it's our heritage and we put up with it for one day. And although people in Wickham have tried to stop it, I don't think they ever will, because those the things that were born and bred, it is, you know, really look forward to it still. So now Wickham Fair is safe and will remain unchanged. But with all these problems that the showmen face, it has meant that over the years, families have become very close. There's a strong sense of friendship and support, even among competing families. The life of showmen is the backbone of the industry. Without the family not life and the unity from, from show people, we, we could not carry on. It was that so we all have our arguments with one another, and we all talk with one another, and sometimes we don't like one another. But if anyone's in trouble, we will all help one another. Uh, we work together, families work together every day, and we have a great sense of support. The old people are looked after by the young people. It's a way of life. I mean, that is the foundation of, of uh, show life is, is the family. The family is first and foremost. In recent years, showmen have found it harder to make a living. Increasing fuel prices, more competition, and an ever present recession has meant that fun fairs, like all other businesses, have had to change and adapt to today's economic climate. I would say they have changed, they have become much more organised. Uh, we have to invest a lot more in rides on a more regular basis now. So therefore the emphasis is on that the rides have to be operating as much as possible uh, because they cost a lot and they need to be paid for. So, um, yeah, we, we need to do more fares in the short period that we've got, the, the short season. And a lot of the rides are now single rides, are, are hired out for either parties, Christmas balls, Valentine's balls, um, corporate functions and things like that. We do a lot of that kind of work now through the winter. Um, plus we do all the racing to the equipment and things like that ready for the next season. Uh, the season, it doesn't work to prolong the season because it's down to weather again. Once we get into bad weather, people don't want to come to fun fairs in bad weather. They only want to come on the sunshine. So um, it's very difficult to keep finding um, more sites to do in a compact uh, period of time. So that, on a personal level, my kids enjoy the fair very much. Probably a little bit less so to getting older and the experiences and hot and towers and places like that that have got a slightly more good impact actually. Theme parks have affected us badly, but I think it is on the turn because when you think um, you can't get your nose inside of the theme park um, without paying up roughly, I think it's about 18 to 19 pounds per person. And they work on the basis that if they have 10 rides, for instance, there will only be at that 10 rides, there will be three rides that they know everyone wants to ride on. So everyone will queue for those rides realising it's not the value of the money that they think it, it was originally. Whereas on a fun fair they can come, uh, they, they ride purely on what they want to ride on. 
In the past, showgrounds have seen many changes. Each generation has been treated to more amazing and thrilling rides. Today's showgrounds are more vibrant in colour, but the atmosphere remains the same. But is the future a happy one? I worry for the future. I worry because we are finding it so difficult, as I said, uh, before with the site. The site is such a problem. And there is so much opposition to the site. They have so many other things that they can do. Years ago, when you, when you came to the, the village or the town with the fun uh, people were just over the moon to see you because it was the light, it was all so exciting. But now, they have so many things that they can go and spend their money on and it's a small world and they see things like this worldwide uh, wide, and you just cannot keep up with people around. I don't think the fairs will ever be done because look, take all, take all the big fairs. How are they going to do away with Oxford Fair, Nottingham Fair, Kilcaddy Fair, uh, Chittister Fair, Petersfield Fair, uh, Orsford Fair. We kept that going when the war was on. Because when you couldn't open, we just used to take a juvenile there, one of his relations, to keep the fair flowing, so that they never got out of the street. Well, once you've done keep that up, they can't. So they'll still do away with that. I do worry about the future of some fairs. I don't think it will cease to happen uh, for at least the next 60, 70 years. But after that, I think possibly that they, they will turn just to the permanent. I don't think they will travel around. I think the people will tend to travel to the fair rather than the fair travel to the fair. Now, especially modern rides out, about two a year, new rides are being designed. So you can't keep pace now with the rides that are being designed. As we're into our high tech now, we're into hundreds of thousands of pounds, and the business is not moving now as fast as where it was, because we're not getting the turnover to go forward. We've gradually got like we are, we stop here, but I've still got my little county cross and I go out with that, so... But he's not been too well, so we stop in there and got all what we want here to hand. I just feel like what we're doing. got so used to the fairs that I hate it when Monday comes and I'm going to sit all day like this and get some more. So I go out, I've just got a little kill. It, it's, it's all the story, really, all the fun like the this week there's a story on the fun fair to tell and next week you move off there and there's another one. It's, but because there are so many, <laughs> you don't really take the interest in them, I suppose. But you're moving and you're seeing so much and you're doing so, so much that um, there are so many things happening. You face a lot of opposition in places like that. Does it not make you just want to give up and not bother? It does. That's how you feel. Like today, that's how you feel, but you pack up and you move on and the sun shines, and that's what it's all about. That's what I like about. It was excellent, amazing, thank you for and me and my friend and we're going to have a serious whip on. <laughs> Back in time, the thrills 
Things I never close my eyes 